All right, all right, all right. Good morning, good morning, and good morning. It is a sunny, beautiful Tuesday here in the heart of the Arkansas Delta. What in the world are you guys doing today to make your day special? I hope you guys survived your Monday. I hope your coffee was way stronger than your Monday. So, uh, hey, we're just going to kind of hang out for a little bit right now. When you get in, say hello. Let me know who all is here. Let me know who's talking to me. Uh, let me know who's watching me, too, okay? So uh, if you're here, if you're going to hang out in my office for a minute this morning, uh, grab a cup of coffee, and we're going to chat a little bit about Scripture. We're going to wrap up Chapter 17. Yeah, Chapter 17 in John's Gospel. Powerful powerful passage of scripture that we're going to jump into here in just the next little old bit. So uh, uh, come on in, jump in, say good morning, yada, yada, yada. Uh, hey, have you hit that share button yet? Share. Hit the share button. Hit that share button. I'm seeing some folks begin to make their way to the office this morning. Good morning, a good morning, and a good morning. I am so glad that you're here, that you're hanging out with the preacher today. Uh, hey guys, it is Tuesday. Uh, yesterday was Monday all day long. I cannot deny it was a beast. I was glad that uh, it was over. Uh, I got home. I did. Okay, I did. I did get to go home yesterday afternoon and I got to put out some more grass killer in my yard. I'm trying to edge all the way around my property, or my, my house rather, I'm trying, to, trying to edge around my house and trying to get it all done. And so I got it completely around my house yesterday. So that uh, is it. Let me see here. Denny's, Denny, good morning, Denny. Denny's going to be able to hang for 10 minutes. My Miss Denise is on. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Robert. Good morning, my brother. How are you doing this morning? Uh, what are the things like in central Arkansas today? Mr. Robert, for those of you who don't know, is in the beautiful place of Hot Springs, Arkansas, and I am honored that he has grabbed a cup of coffee with me uh, today. Who else? Who else? Who else? Okay, so when you're here, remember, share button. Ready? Share. Do that. Uh, hit the share button. Let's get that get that out. We're going to be here. I uh, just want to kind of bring you guys up to date on a couple things. Uh we had 64 Sunday uh, in uh, in worship here in the building. Uh, a, little, a little odd, a little different, uh, but okay. Uh, we were back inside, and so that's going to kind of be the uh, the movement going forward. And so, uh, if you're going to be with us, that's going to kind of be the the direction we're going to be in. Uh, the coffees will be available behind the counter. Teresa Young's going to be taking care of that, and. Uh, That'll be available till 10.30, and then uh, at 10.30, it is, I mean, we're going to flip the switch. It's all going to go on, and then uh, uh, no Sunday school, no nursery, no children's church, okay? That's that's kind of where we are, so uh, just just want to let you know when you, uh, we still got some folks coming in that I don't know who they are, so good morning to you. Uh, Robert says, it is a beautiful day in the spa city. Robert, I wish I was with you in the spa city today and I would let you buy me a cup of coffee. Uh, today you could, could get to do that to me. Uh, I've been working yesterday and today up until just now, I have been working on, uh, worship music for Sunday. Uh, oh, hi, Shan. Uh, uh, glad you're in this morning. Shan, Shan, are you at work? Uh, if you are, how's things downtown this morning? Uh, I've worked on music. We got a we're going to have a wonderful, I mean, a powerful whole uh, uh, worship list for this coming Sunday, and we're continuing in this new message series called Neighbor. I really, really hope that uh, that God spoke to you uh, on Sunday. It was just um, uh, it's it's a timely message that that God is wanting me to bring and. And so this is uh, this is exactly what we're going to do. Uh, I, I'm going to ask you if you're watching right now live, or I'm going to ask you if uh, uh, if you catch this on a rewind. I want to approach Sunday uh, not like the normal mindset, like we did back three or four months ago. Okay, because that time is over. Uh, and so what I want to do is I want to see Sunday as a time to come together. And to celebrate what God has done for us in the past week and to prepare 
for what God is going to do in and through us for this coming week, okay? And so that's that's it. I want our mindset to be that of coming together with the troops and we're going to celebrate and we're going to celebrate the victories that we have had over our enemy and that we're preparing. We're, we're literally, we're uh, uh, tightening up the breastplate. We're adjusting the helmet, okay? We're lacing up the boots a little tighter and we're sharpening the sword. We're soaking the shield. And so that's that's kind of where I want to be. That's uh, that's the approach I want, I want to look at as uh, as we come in. And let's just see how we feel. Let's see what that looks like. Um, I just believe that uh, that God is calling us to do something so much bigger, so much greater than we've ever thought possible as the church. And and I really, really, really and truly want us to do that. Uh, Man, I, my butt, Dave McKinney. Dave McKinney, good morning, Dave. Uh, just now seeing you in here. I am so honored that you were here. I know that you were most probably at work. And uh, uh, for those of you who don't know, Dave McKinney is a dear friend of ours for many, many years. And uh, Dave works at Arkansas State University. And he is also the interim pastor at Shell Lake Baptist Church and has been there for a little while. Uh, so Dave, if you're still on, tell us how things are at Shell Lake. Uh, let us know what's going on over there. If, like I said, I'm not sure how long you can stay. Um, uh, precious man, precious family of uh, Denise and I have known them for years. Actually, Denise went to uh, church with them when they were back in the youth group. So you know, a long, long time. Dave and I have been pastors for a long, long time together. Um, uh, good morning, Judy Davis. Judy, I am, I'm okay. Um, I've got a lot of things uh, on my plate, and I'm trying to spend that plate pretty evenly and uh, make sure I get uh, as many things done as I possibly possibly can efficiently today. Uh, yesterday was an amazing day. Yesterday was uh, working on worship and uh, programming and also working on um, all of my scheduled post and things that, that go on on social media on the different platforms. Um, and something I use, and some of you may not know this, uh, what I do is I use two, uh, they're, they're, they're literally called virtual secretaries, and uh, they do the, the, the bulk of my posting uh, throughout the week. I have, to, I have to load it. I have to actually schedule it, and so I spend a lot of time on one day a week getting everything ready for the coming week. And, uh, and so that was yesterday and last night. And so that kind of got uh, everything ready to go. All right, that's not everything. It's just, uh, I'll, but I'll work those two virtual secretaries to death. I mean, and they are, they're very good at, uh, at what they do. And so uh, uh, they're only as good as the operator. As much as I put in, they're gonna do their work. And so I have to be very organized and very methodical to make sure that I'm prepared at least a week out on what we wanna do on our social media platforms. And so that's been my, my past couple of days. But this morning I've wrapped up worship. I'm about to get our uh, worship books ready to go. And uh, uh, that'll take good care of it. There is Jack and Sandy Armstrong. Good morning, good morning, and good morning. Uh, Jack was very instrumental in helping me this past week. And Jack, we're gonna probably do a little bit more this coming Sunday. So uh, just get ready. Uh, we're going to be uh, having a, a whole, whole, whole lot of fun. So I'm going to enjoy it. But that is about it. Uh, uh, busy, busy week uh, tonight. Tonight, Zoom, Sunday school with Brother Larry. That's at 7 o'clock. Invites will go out about uh, 10 till, 10 to a quarter till. Uh, it'll also be, uh, and the invitation will also be posted on uh, Facebook if you would like to uh, just pick that up and join us actually in the Zoom conversation itself. Or if not, then please, by all means, I want you to watch us live uh, on Facebook. Good morning, Abby DeVazier. How in the world are you this morning, lady? Uh, I hope you and that precious little one of yours are having a good, good morning. Uh, that is that is tonight at 7 o'clock. And uh, for your comments, if you put comments on the Facebook Live, I'm relaying them back to Brother Larry so that uh, he is hearing you and uh, and he is uh, involving you uh, as much as he possibly can. But that is seven o'clock and we want to uh, really, you know, kind of get a good crowd in tonight. Uh, we're averaging, where's my numbers? Uh, we had, okay, for the past three weeks, 
For the past three weeks, we're averaging about 55 people a week in our small groups, which is uh, Brother Larry's, Miss Pat's, and Johnny's. And so, y'all, that's a good, good group. And so we want you involved. If you're not connected already, um, get involved in at least one small group, okay? You can get involved in all of them, but get involved in at least one. And that's Brother Larry's it's on Tuesdays at 7, Miss Pat's Thursday mornings at 10, and uh, also Brother Johnny's at 7 on Thursday nights. But here's the thing. Even if you can't make it live, you can catch it on the rewind. So there's no excuse for you not to be able to dive in. And, and if you do watch that thing, uh, I'm going to ask us to start doing something, and y'all going to have to help me remember. Uh, if you do watch it, whether you watch it live or you watch it in the rewind, would you comment after you've watched it? Just put watched or something. Yeah, watched would be good. So that way we're, we're trying to get a more accurate count as to who all is with us, what, what our accurate online audience looks like. And so if you just, like like today, right, right today, when we're done, when we're over with, if you'll just leave a comment, watched. Uh, or if you watch this later today, watched. That would be amazing. I would really, really appreciate that. And let's do that for each of our online you know, segments. We've got you know, the coffee chats through the week, uh, players on Tuesday, uh, Wednesday Live with me is uh, Wednesday night at 6.30. Uh, Miss Pat's and Johnny's on Thursday. And so if you would do that, okay? Remember, watched when it's all said and done. Hey, we're going to wrap up chapter 17 in John's Gospel. I spent some time there this morning, uh, just in my daily time as well. And, and y'all, this is such a unbelievably powerful prayer that Jesus is doing. So if you've got your Bibles, go ahead and turn them over. Uh, again, we're going to be in John chapter 17. We're going to wrap this up. And while you're doing there, uh, make sure your coffee strong because I'm, I can assure you, you're going to need all of this that you can get. Mm. Oh my word, that is so good. That's about my 19th cup of coffee this morning. And so uh, to say the least, uh, Jim is rocking and rolling uh, with high octane today. Uh, I want to set the stage as we read this. Okay, I just want to, I want us to understand the dynamic that is taking place here. Okay, so, so uh, pay, pay very close attention to me. Uh, when we get to this verse, we're going to start at verse 20. When we get to this verse, the last supper has already taken place. Jesus, the 12 disciples. Judas has already been identified as the betrayer, and he has already left the upper room. Then Jesus and the disciples, okay, were left, and they had this powerful, powerful conversation. Now then Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, and this is that prayer that Jesus prays before he is arrested. I mean, we're talking moments away. I mean, I mean, moments away because at the end of this reading that we're going to have today, it's going to be the end of chapter 17. And tomorrow when we pick this up in chapter 18, we're going to see the arrest. So, so I need you to understand something that as soon as Jesus finishes this prayer, okay, Jesus is about to be arrested. And that dreadful day, that crucifixion day is upon him. It is literally, it is the next day. And so what we've already seen leading up to this point is the prayer that Jesus has. The first part of the prayer was when Jesus prayed for himself. And then yesterday, if you remember, we read where Jesus prayed for his disciples, for those remaining powerful men that he had with him. And, and I have to wonder, um, I just have to wonder, where does that prayer fall into place for the pastors today? You think about that. It's not a trick question, but does that prayer, is that also aimed at the pastors and the church leaders today? Because we know that what we're about to read is for all of the believers then and now. But is there something in that passage from yesterday that connects with that, that chief elder, that bishop that we've read about, that we've looked about in the leadership structure? Something to think about? 
Uh, I love your thoughts. Okay, uh, I love your thoughts on that. Okay, so we're going to pick it up. This is the end of the prayer. And he is praying for you, and he's praying for me. Okay, he's praying for all of those that were the believers at that time. And he's praying for every believer from that moment forward. And this is the same prayer that will be for the last believer on planet Earth before we see God bring that new Jerusalem down. Okay, so this is a very, very powerful prayer. So let's read it. Verse 20, chapter 17. Jesus says this, I do not pray for these alone, meaning the disciples. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Did you catch that? For all those who will believe in me through their word, through the sharing of the gospel, through the spread of the good news. Okay? You with me on this? Okay. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one. That's us, that we. That they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Now we're getting to what we're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. We just peel back a layer, okay, in this whole dynamic of what the believer should be doing. Verse 22. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. Do you hear this theme of unity? There's a very, very powerful theme of oneness in this prayer. So we cannot deny it. We cannot forget it. Verse 23. I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. What a promise of when it's all said and done. Jesus wants the believers with him. Mm. O oh, righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me and I have declared to them your name and will declare it that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. Oh, dear Lord, what a prayer that Jesus Christ moments from his arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane is praying for you today. And, I, and, and I'm just going to kind of peek and see who all's on here. For Miss Denise, for Mr. Robert, for Miss Abby, for Miss Gloria, for Mr. Brian, for Mr. Jack and Miss Sandy, for Jim, for all believers. That's the prayer. I'm overwhelmed that the Christ, the Son of the living God, would pray for me in that manner. And so as believers, we got a powerful, powerful responsibility of taking the gospel to the farthest corners of the universe. 
and it starts by taking it into our neighborhoods, into our communities. Remember what Acts 1 8 says? Remember? Remember what Acts 1 8 says? Take this context, man. And let's go to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And this is just before Jesus ascends to heaven. This is the last words we have of Jesus on this earth. Okay? And this is what he says. But you shall receive power. Now, this is, again, to the believer, okay? You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. In other words, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, what just happened is the demons that were inside you just got evicted, and your body became the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you and and there's that connector word. We talked about that on Sunday. We've talked about it four weeks prior. And you shall not be And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea, or and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the world. We got a job to do. And it starts with me. It starts with you. Okay. Go back. Spend some time this week. Spend some time today. Chewing over that entire 17th chapter in the book of John. Tomorrow, the arrest. Tomorrow, it gets ugly. So let's get ready. I hope to see you tonight on Zoom. If uh, you can't join us in the, the actual Zoom room, that's that's cool word, in the Zoom room, uh, I do hope to see you on live, picking up with Brother Larry Jones. That is all I've got today. I hope that you have a very wonderful day, a powerful day. Uh, here's the thing. Tell somebody about Jesus, okay? We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.